Well, the next principle is one that deals with the environment in child care. And I think this is one that most good teachers spend hours thinking about. So perhaps we can just use some reminders here. The environment, the classroom, or the family daycare home, or the playroom, is really the third party in child care, as far as I'm concerned. It's been referred to as the silent partner. It's almost as good as having another adult with you in the room. So we think about it very, very carefully. We think, should the books be near the blocks, or should they be near the music, or should they be near the housekeeping? Should we have cozy corners here, and active corners here, or can we meld some of the activity areas? How do we think through what the good environment in a child care setting is? And then how do we manage it? I think environments give us all messages. For instance, if you go to a friend's house for supper and you find a picnic table with paper napkins and paper plates and the barbecue set up, you know it's going to be an informal, relaxed, fun kind of evening. If on the other hand, you go and your friend has candles and a centerpiece and cloth napkins, you think, oh, this is going to be a little more formal. So the environment and what's in the environment gives us messages as adults, but it also gives children messages. And it's welcoming or it's off-putting. Somebody said once that they, this was a child, said, I don't like the way my daycare smells. And I think we have to be aware of the fact that children are very acute observers, they're acute touchers, they're acute tasters, but they also are acute smellers. And if the environment smells of, I don't know, Lysol or Clorox, it may be very clean, but not very attractive to children. I also think there's a huge difference if you go into an environment that is for children to play and learn in, and what you see are laundry baskets of toys, blocks and dolls and stuffed animals and puzzles, and in another basket, books and magic markers and paper. Those give messages to children. And I think the messages they need are that we regard what they use in our programs as the tools for learning, and we need to treat them as carefully and as specifically as we would treat the tools in a workshop for adults. Now let's think of a couple of um, situations in which very small changes might help the environment. I think we have some pictures that show us. This is one, this little guy obviously is either annoyed with a rocking chair rocking horse, I guess, or wants to get on it and count. But it looks like a bad mix to me. It looks as if there's something incongruous about the child and the rocking horse. So what would we do about it? Would you take the rocking horse out of the room? Would you straighten it and ask if the child wanted to ride on it? Would you see it as a possible um, Weapon? Yeah. I don't think it looks very safe. So one of the things we do immediately with any child care environment is, of course, we look at it for safety. And here, I don't think this is safe, and I would take it out. Or I would sit down with the child and very, very slowly and carefully explain what it's for. And it's not for hitting. It's not for throwing around the room and it's not for letting adults fall over it. So we have another picture. Well, this is a lovely environmental setting. Obviously, there isn't the space, I think, for the usual two-sided easel. But I think this one has advantages over a two-sided easel. And what would you think they might be? Working side by side. Work, yeah. Working side by side. Nice being able to talk about what you're doing while you're doing it, looking at how other people paint. So this slight environmental change changes the activity of painting.
Now this is one of my favorites. This is from Annie's Ark and I think it is inspired. Those little buckets are each hung on cup hooks on the side of the barn. So a child who is outside can at any point go and unhook a paintbrush from under the buckets, get some water in a bucket, and go off and paint a building, or I don't know if you allow it, but the tires on somebody's car, um, the steps. It always impresses me that children will paint with water and never seem to mind that it dries and it looks all gray and sort of messy. It, the fun is in the process and it's an irresistible one for most preschool children. I don't know, do school age children like water painting? I've never tried it with them. They do too. Yeah, okay. But they like real painting as well, but they'll do water painting. Yeah. So if you're uncertain about changing the environment instead of changing the behavior, there are all kinds of resources available to help you think through. And these books are available probably through most child care councils. And so if you don't own them, or if your friend doesn't own them, or your library doesn't own them, go to your local child care council and see if they have them. Or if they don't know about them, they might like to, and they might make you the first borrower for it.